All right, fellas, let's get everybody in here. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna try to get everyone in here one more time because uh, the computer apparently today, either my computer or Zoom or whatever, is down. So uh, I don't know what's going on. Darren said they're trying to keep us from getting a 501. Uh, let me get everybody back in. Oh, boy. Hold on, fellas. I won't let me do that here. Okay, this is going to be a really interesting night because apparently uh, uh, Zoom sucks tonight. So this will be a really interesting show. So we're going to try to do what we can. I did all this extra work tonight to try a new take on things. Let's use the old phone here and see if it works. And there's someone's iPhone. Get everybody in I can, then we'll get going. Um, <clears throat> uh, join in. There's Darren. I'm going to try to keep an eye on things. Um, so my phone on sound so welcome everybody to the 28th edition of the iwar uh gold strategy workshop with technical issues so fantastic i have my uh my brody lee shirt on supporting the cause anonymous welcome anonymous um i was wearing my uh, master public face mask which i wear to work all the time and uh, tonight's brought to you by one and a half five hour energies. So this is going to be real fun. Uh, so I want to change things up a little bit. I'm going to uh, share my screen. Let me get to that. And that way we can get everybody on board. Oh, look, Tyler's here. Welcome all. So a good time here. Oh, I all. Uh, I'm going to share my screen and show you my spreadsheet. I've worked a couple of different things here to kind of give you uh, some ideas. So first thing first, uh, we are Monday at 9 a.m. is a deadline for gold. So make sure you get yourself in there via email. And uh, there you are. All right, so here we are. All right, so bear with me. Uh, oh, people are still trickling in. Chat. All right, good. Everyone's ready. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so first things first. So last cycle, we saw a double 26 drop. And on the first chart here on the far side, I'm going to bring this guy to the very front. So I can use a little guide here. So over here, you see that we went 26. Now you'll notice throughout the year, 26 is both dropped uh, 27s, 28s. And up. Oh, I'll back up a second. So those of you that are new, uh, what we do in the show is from the IWA.com or playIWA.com. Uh, we're not employed by them, or I'm not as it is, uh, although some people think I am, but I'm not. <laughs> um, so what I've done here is kind of broken down what the drops are. So again, drops are when two holds drop down to 25. And the goal in the IWA for the front 10, the first 10 holds you pick, is to avoid getting those two holds that have 25 point values. You want to get everybody else. So in gold, there's 12 holes in play. So two of those holds go to 25. The other 10 are valid in play. And uh, jumping in, I, I am Kimberly. There is a long-standing rumor that Kimberly is like just sort of the generic name they use for whoever's at the computer that day. Uh, if you don't know, the Johnny Bruning created the game back in 1985 for his students. And uh, the family, after he passed away, took it over and have run it for all these years. And the running gag has always been that it's somebody in the family. So when you're running to Kimberly, it's just whoever it is. Uh, <laughs> hey, this master plan. Uh, I think some of you know that when I went to Gen Con about five years ago, our path from Boston through uh, Ohio went right through Willowick. So we stopped. I got a picture with the Ida Boy belt I had uh, at the Willowick sign because I'm a nerd. But that's okay. And uh, my master plan was to get tickets to a Red Sox Cleveland Indians game, send them to Ida Boy as an anonymous gift, tell them, hey, why don't you bring the whole office down as a gift? 
And then just sit next seat next to him and be like, so Kimberly, it's you. <laughs> but that didn't happen. <laughs> but it's never gonna happen. So my master plan and we'll go there. There's no baseball again anyway. So all right. So getting back to better things. Uh, we're trying to figure out the drops. So I always tell people, don't fall in love with a hold. And I'll talk more about that later on. Uh, I'm gonna cram this in because as soon as we finish this, I'm jumping onto the tube cast, which has been recording. Um, if you didn't see already. We did a tube cast with Alex and myself going over all the awards. Um, he has Tuesday nights off, so we're doing tube casts and everything else. Uh, we're gonna do some specialty tube casts coming up, like commissioner type stuff. One about out of well history, one BRL history, and like deep dives. Because uh, a lot of these leagues have some pretty damn cool in history. So uh, we like to have special guests on. Mike Miles has done it. Uh, tonight, Ryan Patrick's doing it as a uh, special guest. So they're recording right now as well, but you know, we're here. So getting back to the game. Uh, so the idea here is you want to make sure you kind of don't use the same exact drops, always change your strategy, some of the basic stuff. Uh, I still get players that tell me, well, I use the same strategy all the time. And they're like, no. Um, on the first column here, I track what dropped. And so the values is this little column right here, the first part, 26s, and then the actual individual holds. And I do that for two reasons. Is one is we're trying to see what the previous drops were. As a general rule, I don't consider last cycle's drop or two cycles ago. You know, they almost never ever do two cycles back. It's three or more. Uh, over here on the far side, we see seven, you see five. Uh, that's how many cycles since it had hit previously. So it's a way to kind of gauge, like, you know, uh, for example, you'll see 27, 26, it was 20 cycles before it dropped, you know, uh, as a value. Uh, we have some similar numbers now. We'll go about over in a second. Uh, I want to get these out of the way. This is just an extra chart I use. Now, here is the hold chart. And what I've done is don't pay attention to the very top, which is January, September, October. The, the blocks are messed up on the very top because as this one here, oops, as this one here will show, the 2021 schedule has 18 cycles in it. So uh, the normal year is 16 cycles. So that's two extra cycles. It's just the way the year fell. And I always ask the out of way every like November, hey, what's next year's schedule like so we can plan. So we have a lot of things coming up and I'll give you one super teaser. Uh, there is an event I've always wanted to run uh, IWA wide and it's just never happened. And uh, the other day I was talking with the creative team. And I said, Hey, what do you think if we did this big event right in here in the Iowa? Um, early ideas kicking around. It'd probably be the best thing we've come up with since the draft. So cross fingers that we do a good job with it. We're going to hammer out the details. We'll probably present it or kick it off in the summer. So I'll probably present it in the spring. Uh, but this is gonna be really cool. I'm really excited about it. So fun ahoy. So getting back to my point about this is that we need to know the schedule. So when things are happening, so always try to good to keep an idea and as for yourself as well, um, to know uh, what you do strategy wise. Now, I'll give you a quick look at this, this is my strats page. I know nerd alert where I track my singles wrestlers or the ones I actually care about their strategies. I have a couple of singles wrestlers that I use completely as pot stirrers, so I don't track their strats. They're just there to like help things along. Um, so like Leotari, Adam Cash, et cetera. Then the tag teams and the six man teams. And I just track, use this to track my performance for the wrestlers. So if they have a strategy 495 or higher, they get a green. If they're a tag team and it's a 412 or higher, they get green and so forth. And then you have regional belts. Uh, here's a line where I have how many stars they're in for the year. Uh, personal record, I've never exceeded 10 stars in a year. I've come close, but never done it. Adam Cash did it twice because I'm a nerd. Uh, so getting back to the workshop. All right, so I wanted to bang that out. Now, this might be really fast, but the good news is once I finish this, my computer will compact it all up, stop recording, you know, it finishes, and then I'll pile it up and put it on YouTube. And you can watch it and hit return and go back to the beginning or go, what did he say? And I talk fast because I'm from Boston. And because I powered these <laughs> puppies away and didn't take a nap today. I'm, I'm all sorts of messed up. Plus I'm hurt. I, uh, I smashed up my shoulder somehow the other day at work and I'm going to see the specialist tomorrow. And I'm really hoping he doesn't tell me I have a rotator cuff injury. I need surgery because I already had this shoulder repaired about two years ago. Uh, that wasn't fun. And that was a labrum. So I'm crossing fingers that I'm going to be okay. Cause the last thing I want to do is have more free time for IWA. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So anyways, uh, so over here, this chart, oops, 
I can actually put that away now. Don't worry, this stuff over here we'll get to soon enough. Um, and I'll quickly check and make sure no one has any chat stuff because I want to make sure I get you guys. I have my phone up and I can look at it. So if you text me through the messenger, I'll see that too. Uh, so looking at our chart here, now I track the average values, but it's not really a good determining factor of how a hold's going to do. So just really use your own kind of judgment. But uh, I just wanted to look and see, okay, what the holds have done. Uh, you find patterns. Now, some of the guys that play that way are phenomenal, like uh, Brad Norman, uh, um, God, Mike Cook, Derek, you know, a lot of the guys that play that, like, they see it. And I always say, for me, it was a conversation I had with a few different players, Jamie, Brandon, uh, Josh, Jim, and they kind of gave me, like, the thing. I would say it's sort of like that, that matrix moment where you hit the red pill, the blue pill. IWA-wise, when you realize you're chasing the values and not the holes, you'll see the game differently. So we're going to talk about that. And I put up a little chart here to kind of help you give a better deep dive in that. Uh, people seem to go, oh, I like when you do different looks at the holes. I guess you think about it differently. I'll do what I can. Uh, so this just follows the, the valid holds that are worth watching. You will notice here I have 32 and 50. That's because about two years ago, those holds were in play. And then there was what we call the shitstorm cycle, where the IWA will drop two holds that are worth like 25 or 26 points down below 25 points and bring two holds that are worth under 25 points and bring them up. So, uh, it's important to watch those. Uh, what's lucky about gold with the third cycle in the series. So if iron does it and steel does it, we know it's coming and you can kind of plan with it. And when that does happen, this show is gonna be really interesting because I'll tear my hair out. I was lucky last time I saw it coming. I tried something completely different and it worked. So this time if it happens, we'll try it too. All right, so that's that. Um, I'm gonna just kind of move this around and I'm gonna get back to the bigger chart here. So I talk about the holes. Um, we'll talk about theories. I'm really jumping around fast here. I know guys, so don't mind me. I'm trying to get it all packed in because uh, I know Allison did. Where the hell are you? Uh, oh, two chats, two chats. Uh, yep, Jeff Manning is a great player for that too. Uh, steak, steak of ignorance. Oh, that's a good that's a good scene. Every time I see that scene, I want steak too. Fun quick story, when I was doing extra work, I did a, a cop role in a little movie, a TV show for, I think it was CBS. And Joe Pantaleone, who was the guy eating the steak, uh, Cypher, he was the main character. He was like the mayor of Providence. And I was a cop. And I had a scene where I was coming down the staircase and he was coming up the staircase. And he's like, he's like talking to a dude. And then he hits his mark and goes up the stairs. And I'm coming down the stairs. Well, after like the third or fourth take, he started putting his shoulder into me. And we started talking and goofing around. And he's a nice dude. So I told him I was a pro wrestler and I, you know, a long time ago, this is ages ago. And one day he had me take care of his dogs for him, like on set. All right. So he says to me, he's like, what's your name? And my name in acting was Riley Matthews backwards. It was, it was my name backwards. And I'm like, oh, Riley Matthews. He's like, where are you from? Uh, like, Do you have an agent? I'm like, no. He's like, all right. Okay, okay. Riley Matthews. All right. I get a phone call the next day to go down there for an audition for an undercover cop part. I'm not sad. I should not be getting this part call. And uh, I go down, I audition. It's, you know, cool part. I'm like, I had to yell, bang a table. Well, that's what I did when I auditioned. And uh, the best part was at the same time I was doing extra work in the game plan, which if you ever watch the movie, the game plan, you can see me in it a few times because I'm uh, one of the coaches for the rocks team. And fun fact, uh, as we were on that set, word came down to that show Joe Pantaloni was doing was canceled. So I was like, no. So there's my brush with almost greatness. There you go. Sorry. Joe Pantaloni came to mind. Random. This is how uh, five energy works. Five hour energy. Anyways, here we are with our current chart. Now, what I've done is three different things to kind of make this an easier way to read. And again, you might want to pause this over the weekend and kind of look at it, because I think this is a different way to look at it. Now, first things first. Over here, we have the chart that shows all the drops. So you see 29, 28 was in iron. So rule those out. Those combos are all gone. 28, 27 was in steel. Forget about those. And 26 is last cycle. I also... Uh, would say 28, 27, but that was two cycles ago and it was steel. So that's also in, not in play. Anything with 25, not in play. So you see the yellow, all the yellows are the area or the combos that I don't want you to pay attention to. Um, another one I'm going to add to that list is 12 and one. And we'll talk about that in deep detail right now. So 
you look over here in this column and you have kind of the pairings, you can kind of see what the options are in a different block. It just gives you a different look at it. Um, it's, it's uh, making sure I got everybody. Okay, just got a message. Anyways, uh, what I've done is show there's two reasons why I want you to ignore 12 and one and watch it hit and all of us pull our hair out. Two cycles ago, 12 and one right down here, I'm using my cursor, uh, dropped at 28, 27. That's part A. Part two is it would be the same uh, double drop happening again. So um, it's just a way to look at it differently. And what I try to do is try to figure, okay, if it's gonna hit again, it won't be the same thing. Now here's the thing about 12 and one. You'll also notice over here, it happened one, two, uh, where was it? It's down here, I think three. It like happened, I'm yeah, missing one. It happened a few times. So I'm gonna say 12 and one is out of the mix. Someone just messaged me. Hello. <laughs> yes, I know. It's, it's one of those things that, you know, I, I will say, you know, if you wanna give it to one of your crew, that's fine, but I wouldn't bank on it all the way through. Uh, so what I do is I rule certain things out. Now over here, you know, this was all the, oops. <laughs> I meant to do that. Uh, you have your combos and you can kind of figure out where you're holding. Now what I do is I'll take my wrestlers and they're like, you know, like Adam Cash or whoever, and you know, go through and kind of look at, it's a good way to say, okay, am I covering all my bases? So in the CWL, I have six wrestlers and 200 tag team, one's a six man, and then there's three singles. And so I'll spread things out. So I've got like, I think Mechanico's got like 29, 26, and there's 29, 27, and there's a 28, 26. And it's a way of covering your bases. Now, what it does is, is two sides of this coin. Is if you spread love out and you kind of go all over, you might say, okay, well, I'm going to have a greater shot at uh, hitting a good number. But I'm going to have less of a chance of most of my crew doing it. If you want to invest in, you know, go heavy on GameStop stock, you can do it. It's just rolling the dice. It's a hard roll to make. Uh, let me see here. I got a comment. Uh, <laughs> Jarvis will take it and beat the bunch now. So well, uh, Jarvis is in charge right now. So or Loomis is so get a hill to climb. Okay, so over here is something I'm doing is a little bit newer. This is a little new look. What I've done is taken the various combos. So the numbers, so 1, 8, 12, 31, 33, 53, 59. These are the ones that are in play. These are what make up our little blue column, pink column, et cetera. So what I've done is I've kind of done over here and said, okay, we know they're not going to be repeated as 26. And we assume we don't want to have the 25. So what I do is go, okay, do I think it's going to go to what next? So on one, do I think it's going to go to, uh, sorry. Um, do I think it's going to go to 27, 28, 29? Do I think it's going to hit 30? So bearing that in mind, what I'm going to do is show you over, hey, stop that. Uh, let me get this. My computer sucks tonight. It really blows. Adding. It's a Dell. Thanks, Dell. All right. So here is another chart I use. And what I do is I track the values and the averages. Not unusual. I got that before. This time, though, I track and see what point value went to it. So the 30s came from 29, 27. And before that, 29, 26. And before that, 28, 27. My guess this time. It's going to be, let's say, let's say I'm going to go, uh, an example I have here, 29, 26. And I say that, I say that and just assuming, like, let's say I'm betting all my money, I'm, you know, on the table, push it in, all in on 29, 26, 12, 53. Because one in 12 just went two cycles ago. I'm going to walk away from that one. So having that feeling, the reason I'm, I'm, I'm banking on that is I also have put the holds. I have the 25 in play and I've dropped it. Hey, Jody. Uh, I've dropped 25 down to uh, the fifth spot, assuming it's gonna go from 30, oh, 29 down to 28. Why? It's a minor curveball. It's more of a curveball that messes with perfect point flows and people are gonna get the right exact strategy to win uh, the top report hits. And so it makes it more difficult that way. Uh, whereas the 12, I assume, is going to go down to 25, so I'm going to avoid that. So for the sake of argument, what I've said here is we have two row cycles in a row 
where 30 came from 29s. Uh, I'm going to say in this case, we're going to say 29 doesn't go to 30. The two other holes will go to 30. Now, how you place your holes is up to you. I always use this little chart here. I have my uh, examples of what the perfect point flow is. So getting over to here, keep this in mind. So let's say I'm going to say 25 is going to come out of this. So I'm going to assume that all these numbers, it's going to go 25 again. But here's the thing if you look at the bigger picture. 12 has been down to 25 every other cycle. So quick little backup. One thing I do often when I do these shows is play the game of convince yourself A is going to happen, then convince yourself B is going to happen. So if I just told myself, I think 1253 are going to drop, okay. My counterpoint is, you know why 12 is not going to drop? Because 12 has dropped every other cycle. And this would make it four cycles in a row. And they almost never, ever do that. I wish Ryan was here to tell me that we probably don't. But I've, I can't think of the last time I've ever saw that. Um, if I want to go to, I have like five years with those strats. Uh, <laughs> here's Alex. Where are you? Um, almost. Let me see what the time is. I don't even have a time left. Oh, it's fantastic. It's probably like, yeah, sorry. Um, we're going to do my parts of the I want report. So. Uh, we see anybody? Oh, good. All right. So anyways, getting back to it, what this does is this just gives you some different looks. And I think it's important to take different looks at it. It's kind of like, um, if you go to the store and you're looking for some kind of specialty yogurt and you always get in the same spot and they move it and you're like, where is it? Where is it? And you're looking everywhere for it. And you ask somebody else, did you guys, do you guys still have that? And they're like, oh yeah, it's right there. And you like, oh, okay. A different set of eyes. This is taking a different look at the game. So in this case, I'm going to say, while on one side, I want to go 1253 and that's my drop. Let's say I'm going to say, nope, 12 is not going to drop down to 25 again. It won't do it. So you want to use 12 in your holds. So just again, and those can be kind of confusing when you're going like, oh, one or the other. It's just the game we play in our heads and we convince ourselves, you know, this is it. And uh, it can be maddening, I know, uh, playing the game like a 26 has dropped. And what's funny is last cycle, I gave 26s to only one of my crew, Gina Collada, and she's one of my throwaway strats. I just, I just have her for fun. She's not like competitive like her. Uh, so in this case, let's say I'm going to use this one here. So what I'm trying to do is figure out what do I think will hit 25. Now, one thing it does happen sometimes is they will do a drop, go up, and then drop back down. So they have like every other. So you'll see in this little chart here where 12 was every other for a while and they'll establish that and you see it sometimes. So I think one could be a legitimate option for dropping down. So if I said, I think it's gonna go 25, I won't worry about this, but let's say for sake of argument, I'm, I'm gonna say that um, 12 will go to 30. And let's say well, here, 25 goes to 28, 12 goes to 30. And why? Because they're messing with players who play the odds and try to get a report hit. Not that I try to because I'm terrible, but um, that's why I do the show. <laughs> uh, and if I wasn't terrible, then who would do the show? Goddamn kids. All right, just making sure no one's in any comments. Uh, if any other questions, fire away while I'm doing this. Um, I have a bunch of what, quick, fast notes to go over too. Um, so let me just take a quick look at this and say, okay, so we see 30 was 33, okay? So let's like 33. 33 was 26, 30, 26, 30, 27. So is it going to go up or is it going to sink down? They do have a habit sometimes I've noticed uh, if a hold has been good for a long, long time, it's not number 25. It's time to consider that hold as an option to consider for dropping to 25. Uh, I did that one time back in America specifically where I had 45 is like, I think it's going to drop. It hadn't it had been going like going for a long time is really a good hold. Uh, and then it dropped. And I felt great, but that doesn't happen that often. Which is why I hate the game. <laughs> why can't it be like iron? Yeah, iron. Um, I always say, if you play an iron and steel, you really should be using the gold drops because they always pork us with that. Um, so let me get back to this. Let me see. Uh, schedule, I don't need you anymore. Let me clear some space so I can see. Because uh, I have my little cheat sheet here for you guys, like things to do's and don't. So don't double a hold. Uh, I put don't typo a hold 
Did you know Mechanical had a 470 strat because for some reason instead of five, I put S? What the hell? I put S in like the eighth spot. I'm like, why would I do that? Uh, not that he hit like a, a 501 if he didn't, but still, Sock City. Uh, always change your strategy. Keep it mixed up. Keep it, uh, you know, if you keep it the same, I did an experiment where I had LePage Turner give out a free strategy and I kept it the same for, I think, like seven months. And it averaged a 492 for a while. It, was, it wasn't bad, but it just, it, it was a hard 42. Uh, challenge every champ. Always challenge every regional champion. Challenge every TV champion you qualify. If you have a top five spot, challenge the league champ. Uh, those you had to pay for. You had to pay for those shots for the, uh, unless you're a regional champion. Uh, which reminds me, the IWA, or I forget this. Oh, quick, quick uh, question. I'm going to put this out there. Uh, if we offered... Tomohiro Ishii boxers. Would that be a prize you'd want to win? I met, I saw him in person in, in Lowell a couple of years ago when they were up here. And uh, that dude's tiny. I mean, he's a fire hydrant. Don't get me wrong, but he's like, he was shorter than my girlfriend. And she was like, he's one of the wrestlers, isn't he? And I could have got a picture of Sonata, but the line ran out of time. I was like, damn it. I wanted a picture with Sonata. I actually wanted a picture with Yano, but that's another story. I won't talk NJPW anymore. People are like, what the hell? Uh, quick aside, all right, that's not where I wanted to go. But here you can see how we do my matches. Uh, <laughs> this, I'd always put a little thing out, so I want to hit on this real quick. This was a three-question thing. Uh, a couple of years ago, they asked about the six-hold rule. They want to get rid of it. Now, like, should be seven holds. It's an old IWA rule. And what's happening now is a lot of the, the big roster folks have gotten so good that if they're not blocking each other out with um, perfect scores and the, the only one title, then they're blocking each other out with six in a row. Um, yeah, Derek told a really good story about this like, last week or two weeks ago where he, he got blocked uh, for a ridiculous reason. Um, reducing the Federation cap of wrestlers from 50 to 30 or 25. I'm not a big roster player. I'm not going to vote on that. It's not my call, not my problem. Uh, a singles champion uh, moves up in the vacated belt. Should it go to the guy who beat them? I would actually say my preferences, and again, this is just me, if my wrestler it becomes champion and you beat me, let's say at a 496 and you had a 498, you really should get that belt for me. Like, you've earned it. You won that match. You should get the belt. If it goes to the battle royal person, runner-up, that's okay. But, like, that's if no one beats the champion. Uh, my personal take. You guys can talk amongst yourselves. I wanted to hammer that out. Um, getting back to the holds, talk about the bottom five. How much time we got left? Why is there no ticker on this? Sons of bitches. I'm tired. Uh, any questions before I, before I forget? No? Let me get this chat. Anybody have questions? I have this weird thing on my computer. Whenever I log out of a room and go back, my chat bar goes up. I don't know why that does that. All right. Let's get back into it. So again, we're looking to avoid the 25s. And what I do over here, the, the big thing about this chart, and people who seem to like this chart, is by seeing where the hold came from, you know where it might not come from. So for instance, if 27 and 29, 29 is the exception. They'll almost always be 29s. Uh, but 27 is rare. So I'm going to say 27s, they won't be 29, 27 again. Kind of like how the drop won't be the same the bump up won't be the same. Um, although for a while it was 27 and something for a long time. Be, uh, last year, and not be all, but gold. Uh, for a while, like 27 was like the magic number. One of the 27s always went to 30. So going through this, and, I, and or some of you are, might hope your hands not spinning. I know this is fast, a lot of information. And you're like, I'm trying to play a wrestling game. I know. It's about picking strategy. This is the strategy side of the game. I always say that there's two types of playing in the game in that way. There's strategic and storytelling. And I know this is a strategy workshop and I'm a storytelling player, but I think this is just a better way to kind of, you know, all kind of bump our heads together and figure something out. And if we hit more 500s and 501s and all that jazz, and I'd love to see a bunch of report hits from uh, the NWL and uh, does my heart proud. So uh, let me see here. So getting back into this, Oh, 10 minutes. Okay, so we're at 10 minutes. Let me tell Alex. 10 minutes. He's so mad at me. Uh,
All right. Thank you for letting me know. And there's a countdown too. All right, good. So I have a countdown. So I'll get into this one quick thing. I'll talk about the bottom five. So the top five kind of get the idea here that you can kind of see where you think it's going to go. And it's important using this area and this area, sorry, this area as you're kind of figuring out things. So you say, okay, like 25 came from, you know, from 29 or, you know, came last time it came from you know, 29, uh, 2026. Whatever it may be, you, you want to avoid the 25s at all costs. So it's kind of about figuring out what you think it's not going to be. Now, the bottom five is trying to figure out the top five values. So you want to use 90 uh, uh, because it was 45. So your 45s are locked in. So 90, 83, you're good. Uh, throw them down at 14, 15, uh, either order you want to do. They might throw a curveball at us and not give us 44 for, for 90, but just use them, get the points. Uh, you want to use 145. I'm sorry, 144, 143. Every so often they'll throw the curveball and give us 244 is going to 45 or 243 is going to 45. Uh, Mike Cook once told me that it happens when it does happen, it's more often when 90 is at 43, which it isn't right now. So what I'm going to say for sake of argument, um, we're going to look at this and say 90 and 83 are on the board. Now you see I, yeah, 73 and 85, all right? So what I did is use the higher average of the two holds. That's just like the easy way to do it. You could do, you know, 66, 61. Uh, the, bar, the bigger your roster, the more you want to diversify. If you're looking to hit big, uh, if you're like convinced that like, you know, 28, 26, that's it, or 27, 26, that's it. And remember I mentioned about uh, time between drops. Let me talk about it real quick. I almost, I stepped over that. This first column where it says 10 ago or four ago or nine ago, that's how many cycles it's been since that's hit as a drop. So we're looking at 28, 19 cycles, 19, um, 27, 13 cycles. Now, it's a risky gamble to give a singles wrestler a double drop. But you know what? You got to roll those dice sometime. Uh, someone's throwing a chat in, chat ahoy. Uh, so you're saying 12 and 1 are not likely to drop, and why? So it was a hold that was dropped two cycles ago. And uh, another reason is you'll see on this chart that one had 25 two cycles ago, as did 12. So if they hit again, I'm just saying it would be a combination of both those. And I don't believe 12 is going to drop to 25 because that would be fourth cycle that went, you know, every other cycle. And they just don't do that. For whatever reason, knock on wood. Um, let me see here. 12 and one together, correct. Yeah. Uh, as a combo, and that is 29, 26. Although I like 29, 26, uh, 12, 53, as I did for the example here. But that's just if I want to believe that 12 is going to drop. So it's it's a risk, but if I wanted to be completely ballsy and say, well, I don't think 12 is going to drop at all, then I would completely ignore this whole entire block. Every 29 gets ignored. And the thing is, what's good about doing that, the, the, the pro to doing that is you free up your wrestlers for the other available drops of 28s, 27s, 28, 26, 27, 26, and you can bombard those and, you know, increase your chances to win. Uh, so uh, again, it's good to kind of look at that. I got six minutes left. So let me talk about these bottom holes real quick. Um, so I talked about, you know, how many cycles ago. So when it comes to this and we have our, our look here, so a similar idea. 44s most commonly go down. One goes down, one goes up. So you assume 143 is going to go up. So which of these is going to be? So one thing you can do is say, I play the stronghold. So 73, 44, 45, 44, 45, 44. Do I think 73 will go to 45 again? It could, absolutely could. And I'm playing it safe in this little strategy over here. That's why I want to give to one of my non-competitive people. If I'm going to roll the dice and I'll give like Ali Atari, I'll give him 66. Uh, just because it's been a while and I don't know if they would give 44, uh, 45 again. They could, it can happen for sure, but uh, it's, that's the reasoning I use. So if I say, we're gonna see 73 go down to two and we're gonna see, now what this does for me visually is I can kind of see as I do these out. So same thing with 85, let's say 85 stays strong and stays at 45 and this one goes down 41 because 61 sucked for a long time 61 was good for a long time so i'm really bitter about 61 uh and then it got really bad and i was like god damn it 
Um, but you can see if I go through this whole entire thing, I can kind of figure it out and like what the options are. And it's just a way to look at the holds differently. And this is the way, like, if you say to yourself, okay, I go through and do all this with all the holds. And if I go through up here and kind of say, okay, 27, it's not going to be 26, but it's not going to be 27. So it's going to, let's say, 40. I wasn't tired. You're tired. Um, I'll say, damn, I'm tired. Uh, I would say 30. So I can say 12 going to 30, you know, and then what I do is I take these out. If I'm convinced 12 and 33 are going to be 30 points. And as you can kind of see, as I go through it, I can eliminate options and then narrow it down. It's just, again, I'm just trying to offer you guys some ideas to look at this differently. Uh, if it helps you click and, you know, take the red pill, fantastic. Uh, my list of things to talk about here. So, <laughs> again, uh, I want to mention real quickly, Alex is the TubeCast channel, the Retro Wrestling Presents. We have a whole lot of fun stuff on there. We don't plug it enough. I'm going to get better at that. Uh, the award show just went up. Uh, we try to review the year of awards and it's a really fun show. Uh, talk about some of the stuff you guys put out, which we love. Um, let's see the huge events coming soon. I can't give any more much away about it, but I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. It's going to be something that kind of unites the entire IOR network of players in a way we've never done before. Uh, so it'll be friggin' awesome. Uh, a little hint preview as well. The CWL will be releasing the big event that's going to be their big signature event in the in the league. It's called Lord of the Ring. Uh, there's going to be an awesome prize for it. It's going to be a fun setup. We're working on the details, uh, but that's going to be cool. Went over that. Uh, cameo. If you didn't see the cameo, I got uh, Brandon Cutler to do a cameo. I got. I paid him for it. <laughs> but it was a fun cameo uh, for Larry Sullivan. Uh, it's. On the Attaway homepage because they were like, I was like, hey, you have to check this out. And they put it on the page, like, whoa, boy. Um, the Johnny B Cup uh, is signups are on. Same with Murano Memorial. It's three entries per player. Uh, you can be from one league, you can be from different leagues, uh, but it's three entries per player, $3 per entry. So it's $9 for three, obviously. If you want to enter, email that away with your matches and say, hey, I'm adding $3 or $6 or $9 or more if you're doing tag team and Johnny B Cup and Murano. Um, these are both really cool events. Johnny B Cup, I give a, I actually give a cup prize. And in a similar motion, um, the All Rookie Cup starts on 316, Stone Cold Day. And that's going to be just for NWO rookies, as is the Bad Company Cup, the second annual one. Uh, these are both free events. Uh, they're done with uh, all the NWO players only. And I'm going to give a NWO Trophy Cup to the uh, winner of the All Rookie Cup because. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, let's see. Any questions while we're wrapping things up? Anything I didn't hit that would be helpful? There's a chat function here. If you can't find it, if you go into like the bar, there's a little thing that says chat. Uh, you can click that and chime in. Well, thank you for watching, guys. Uh, this is one of our bigger crowds. <laughs> oh, 10 people. Um, that's all right. Uh, I... I put this online. Uh, it'll be online probably tomorrow night. Um, it depends what happens to the doctors tomorrow morning. If he tells me I'm benched for a while, I'm going to be home, but doing it in the afternoon. Uh, if I go to get to work, uh, then that's in the story. Um, as always, you know, make sure you're active, uh, submit those promos. You know, uh, we did the award show. One thing that I talked about in the show is that, you know, what you do to give us to work with is what makes the game fun. So give us a great promo, call it someone, sneak attack somebody, uh, have fun with it. It really is about having fun. Uh, you guys make it better. And the, the more you guys give us to work with, the better our reports are. So uh, thank you everybody for watching. I'm going to go do the tube cast with Alex. Uh, you know, if you have questions or other things, you know, feel free to reach out to me or any of the players. If they end up in a locker room, ask the rooms. A lot of people in there can help. Uh, we're happy to help. And always root for Dixon Ticonderoga, the best pencil in the business. All right, everybody, thank you very much. I'll catch you next time.